Hello, my name is Jason Pearson. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to create an effect in Illustrator CS4 and save that effect as a preset so that you can reuse it on multiple items. So the first thing we need to do is get the star tool. I'm going to click on my object tool, come down to the star tool, and draw a simple star on our screen. Now with that star selected, I want to make sure to change the fill and the stroke. Now I can do that either here or I can do it over here on the color panel. It doesn't matter. Make sure that the fill is on top of the stroke. And then I'm going to switch to swatches and I'm going to choose a yellow color from that swatch set. I'm going to click on the outline and I'm going to hit the red slash to turn it off. So now I've got a yellow star with no outline. I'm going to get my black pointer tool just to make sure that I have it selected. From our appearance panel, we have a stroke and a fill. I'm going to take that fill and I'm going to drag it down here to the white piece of paper, which is going to duplicate that fill and give me two of them. Now I'm going to make sure that the first fill is selected by just simply clicking on it. And then I'm going to go up to Effect. I'm going to come down to Stylized, and I'm going to pick Drop Shadow, which will allow me to choose a drop shadow for our star. Now we've got a lot of options in here, the ability to change the mode, the opacity, the transparency, so we can have it see-through, the offset, the blur. Really, the only thing I want to change is its color. So I'm going to double click in the little color area, and I can either use the color spectrum, or I can click color swatches and choose red off of the color panel. Hit OK. I'll hit OK again, which will automatically give me a red drop shadow behind my star. Now what I want to do is I want to roughen the edges of the star to give it a much more stylized look. So again, I'm going to make sure it's selected. I'm going to go up to Effect, down to Distort and Transform, and I'll pick Roughen. Now when it comes to Roughen, we've got a lot of different options. The ability to change the size and the detail. I can either drag the detail slider, or I can simply click inside of the detail slider and type in 0.25. Now I'll hit OK, which will give it a rough and jagged edge to it. Now all of this is done right here in the appearance panel. We want to apply the roughen to the fill. If I click the twisty on the fill, I can see that the drop shadow was there, but the roughen is just by itself. If I grab the roughen and drag it down into the fill, it'll now become part of that fill, that group. And I'll go ahead and twist that. Now our second fill, we're going to go ahead and change the color. So if I click on it, I get a little drop down, which brings up my little swatch set, and I can pick a different color for it. So I'll go with a different color. Now what I want to do is I want to create a transform on this. I want it to kind of swirl out and change. So I'm going to go up to Effect. I'm going to come down to Distort and Transform, and I'm going to pick Transform. Now, if you want to be able to play around with this and see what's going to happen, you can actually put a check mark in Preview, move the box out of the way, and then make your adjustments and actually see it happening. Since I already know exactly what I want, I'm going to come down here into the Copies. I'm going to backspace over it, and I'm going to type in 15 copies. So I want 15 copies in here. For the scale, we can either drag the sliders, or I'm going to click inside of the horizontal, backspace over it, and I'm going to set it at 80. I'll then hit Tab, which will switch to the vertical, and I'll also type in 80. So that's going to change the scale of the transformation behind this. In the Move, I want to be able to offset it. So I'm going to backspace over it, and I'm going to type in negative 
0.7. I'm going to click inside the vertical and I'm going to change it to negative 1.2. I'm going to backspace over it, negative 1.2. Now in the angle, I can either set the angle by simply dragging around here, or again, I can click inside the box, backspace over it, and type in 45. So now I've got it all set. If I hit OK, it's going to automatically apply a transform, making this swirl around and die out in the background. Now to give it a different stylized effect, I want to actually choose an inner glow for it. So again, I'm going to come up to Effect. I'm going to come down to Stylize. And I'm going to pick Inner Glow. I can change, again, the screen, the opacity, the blur. I want to take this down a little bit. So I'm going to click inside the blur. I'm going to backspace over it. And I'm going to type in 0.5. I'll hit OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to soften the edges and apply a glow effect to the background. Now again, over here on our appearance panel, everything has been done to a certain group. So our first fill group, of course, had our roughen and our drop shadow. Our second fill group has the transform and the inner glow. Now if ever it's in the wrong place, all you have to do is drag it, modify it, and rearrange it. If you want to make changes to something, all you have to do is click on it, which brings up the entire dialog box again. You can make your adjustments and hit cancel. Nothing is final when it comes to effects. That's why they refer to them as live effects. They can be changed and modified at any time. Now that I've got it done once, I want to be able to apply this again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our window and I'm going to open up our graphic styles panel. Now our graphic styles panel allows us to save specific styles for reuse later on. Over here in our appearance panel, right up here at the top where it says path, that has everything that has been done to this particular star. If I grab it, drag it, and drop it into the graphic styles panel, all of the information will automatically be saved and applied to that graphic style panel. In fact, I'll move this a little bit out of the way. And now, if I simply click off and pick a different object, maybe a rectangle tool, I'll draw a simple rectangle, make sure it's selected, and simply click our graphic style. And everything that has been done to the star will now be done to the rectangle. The same effect can also be applied to text. If I click on the text tool, click down here at the bottom, and I'm going to type in, in capital letters, awesome. I'm then going to click my black pointer tool. I'll stretch out the text to the size that I want. Move it a little bit over here. And then simply apply the graphic style directly to it. And everything that has been done to the rectangle and the star will now be done with the text. Very, very cool tools. Now this has just been a peek into what is possible with Illustrator CS4. If you're interested in some of our other classes, Come see us at learnkey.com and see all the rest of the stuff.